So you want to start a cargo van business? Well, guess what? You are in the right place. This video, I'm about to let you guys know seven steps to get started with your cargo van business. So don't go anywhere. Make sure to stay for the entire video so you don't miss anything. You want to make sure you know this stuff so that way you can set yourself up for success. All right. So don't go nowhere. See y'all here real soon. So step one, y'all, do your research, all right? There's so much information out there. I mean, there's my channel. There's a bunch of other content creators that are making content around the cargo van business. You can look things up online. You can hop in Facebook groups. I mean, there's endless amounts of ways for you to research this business, start to maybe look up, you know, different ways to make money, look in your area, see what type of contracts are available, so on and so forth. But I can't stress this enough, this business is not for everybody. So do your research, make sure you're, you know, this is something you wanna do, right? Also on top of that, man, like if you've never worked a driving position before, like you may want to, you know, see if that's even something that you're gonna be okay with. Not everybody likes driving, man. A lot of people, you know, get stressed out when driving. You know, so like that part may simply just, you know, not be something you want to deal with. Right. You know, and then on the other side of it, it's like, are you going to be working local? Or are you going to be doing like over the road type work? You know, if you're going to be doing the OTR stuff, man, you might be on the road for a little while. So do your research, like see if that's going to be something you want to do. You know, you can even get like driver positions to give it a try first before you go and invest a bunch of money and get in your own vehicle. I've seen it so many times where people you know, invest their money, go get a vehicle. They start hitting the road and, you know, a month later, they're like, yo, this isn't for me. I can't be on the road this long. Right. So, you know what I mean? Like do your research. Don't just jump into this. You know what I mean? Make sure this is a smart decision. All right. So research is done. You figured out, all right, this is something that I want to get into. Okay. Well, next step is you need a vehicle. All right. You need to get yourself a van. Now you have a few options. Okay. Step two, get yourself a van, all right? Now, are you gonna be paying cash for your van? Are you gonna be buying it outright, okay? Are you gonna be financing your van, okay? Are you gonna be leasing your van or are you gonna be renting, right? So you got a few options. Now, you know, I'll speak briefly on that. Like, renting is gonna be tough, bro. You know what I mean? Like, it is expensive, you know? Even if you get like a fleet account, you're looking at 35 cents a mile, you know what I mean? and roughly like 450 bucks a week plus your miles and that's not even counting gas insurance all the other things so like renting you know what i mean uh it's going to be a little tough okay you know the biggest thing about this business is like how can you keep your overhead down you know what i mean like renting jumps that up okay so you know me personally i finance my van if you got the bread and you can just you know outright pay cash for it like dope you know what i mean again less overhead you won't have that, you know, $600 car payment that I have each month. So, but get yourself a van, right? And, and, and part of getting yourself a van goes back to step one, right? Make sure you do your research. You know what I mean? Like what type of work are you planning to do? You know, how much payload do you need? Are you going to be doing over the road work where it's probably going to be a good idea to have the capacity to carry three pallets? That might be a smart idea. You know what I'm saying? If you're gonna be doing local work, is that necessary? May or may not be, depending on the contract. You know what I mean? I've come across contracts out here in Arizona where, you know, delivering bread for Wendy's, right? And they wanted a van that could fit three pallets of bread, okay? So sometimes uh, the type of work that you're gonna be doing will dictate the vehicle that you get, you know? Other times you may just get the vehicle that you get and you make it work, right? Different mentality. Now, step three, this is going to come down to how serious are you, right? Like, obviously, there's a bunch of people that, you know, operate uh, as a 1099 uh, self-employed, you know, just contracted employee, right? And that's okay, but you're hurting yourself financially, right? Um, at some point, and I suggest early on, which is why I'm saying it in these steps, you should form some type of business, okay? Whether that's an LLC 
or an S corp or a corporation, what may be it, that's your choice, right? LLC is typically the easiest, most cost effective. Most of y'all are probably gonna just be doing single member LLCs, maybe a small partnership thing where you have, you know, maybe two people. Uh, LLCs are typically gonna be the simplest for you there. And that's gonna help you out in so many ways. And when it comes to uh, e even just liability protection, you know, you not being liable as, as, as a, a, a 1099, just a sole proprietorship essentially, right? Um, and on top of that, there's tax savings and advantages and extra ways you can go about, you know, write-offs and stuff like that. So uh, form your business, okay? Form your business. And I'm also going to include in this step um, insurance, okay? Like at this point, you need to be setting up your insurance. Um, depending on the type of opportunity that you have, it's going to determine the insurance, you know? A lot of times the 100, 300,000 might work. On the other end, you know, common practice is a million dollar auto liability and a hundred K on the cargo. Okay. So the opportunities that present themselves sort of dictate the insurance that's needed, or you can just get the insurance that's needed for most opportunities. And, uh, you won't have to be, you know, scrambling in the moment to get your insurances and stuff switched around, you know, uh, but insurance making sure that's all set up if you're going to be doing over the road like yo you need to have that million dollar insurance anyways because in order to have your mc uh you know number having having your authority uh you need to have the million dollar and 100k cargo right no broker is going to work with you if you don't so setting up insurance is going to be imperative and you know in that comes an expensive cost you know uh <laughs> I would say on average, most people are probably spending anywhere from $600 up to, I've heard up to like 2000, you know, depending on your age, if you're younger, maybe you don't have the cleanest driving record, all those things go into it. Um, but setting that up is going to be key. Now, also another thing, since you've set up your business license, getting an EIN number is very important. That's like your social security number for your business. All right. So you want to set that up. You can get your EIN number set up online. You can set that up with the uh, IRS. All right. So, but you do want to get that set up. Um, you know, if you're, you know, looking to get your business credit going, like get a Dunn's number, get a Dunn's and Bradstreet number. Um, that's going to pay off down the road exponentially, you know, as you build up business credit. Um, and maybe at some point you decide you want to expand your business, scale it in some capacity. Um, having some type of business credit is going to be very beneficial to you. Now, step four, if y'all have been watching any of my content, you already know I talk about the apps, you know what I mean? Gig work style apps for cargo vans, like get on those, you know what I mean? Whether you're running over the road or you're running local, like it's a good thing to have those. Essentially, you got GoShare, right? That's one of the apps. You got Dolly, which I'm actually wearing a Dolly shirt today. Uh, Freight, F-R-A-Y-T, Dispatch and a bunch of others, right? But get into some apps, download some apps, get signed up for those apps, you know. Just a disclaimer, if you don't have, uh, you know, a clean record, uh, you know, if say you got felonies, anything like that, bad news is a lot of these apps won't work with you, but uh, you know, that's just kind of, it is what it is, man. So just wanted to let y'all know. Um, but also even like my company, you know, I got a national contract and I'm onboarding drivers in different states all across the country for different opportunities. Reach out to me. You know what I mean? I'm probably onboarding in your area. So that's another app. That's another gig work style app. So a lot of opportunities with the gig work money. Um, you know, it's really dope because it's just it's on demand work and you know, you essentially just, it's like Uber or Grubhub or all these different apps that people use, but it's for cargo van loads, right? So you just accept and decline as they come in, super simple, work in your own schedule, but it's an easy way to create some instant cash flow, all right? And, you know, you got to look and see if these different apps are available in your area, but, you know, definitely get on that. That's a very important step. Now, step five, I'm going to go ahead and speak on it.
as most of you probably know, if you don't know me or my channel really yet, I do mostly local work. But for those of you that do want to get out and about and you're doing the over the road cross, you know, state lines, uh, carrying loads, you're going to need to have a few extra things right now. When it comes to a DOT number for your Department of Transportation number, um, it's not necessary for cargo vans. Like if you're working local, as long as your vehicle is under 10,000 pounds, 10,001 pounds or whatever, you're not required to have a DOT number. All right. Um, but in order to work with brokers, you do. Okay. And if you're crossing state lines, you need an MC number. You need to have uh, an authority. Okay. So these are a few extra steps that you have to take. Thankfully, to get your DOT number, you can sign up uh, on the FMSCA website, and you know that one is free. Um, of course, when you're getting your authority uh, to get your uh, MC number, that one does cost uh, $300. Um, so keep that in mind. These are some extra expenses and extra things you, you got to do. And again, uh, to have your MC, you do, like I said previously uh, in the video, uh, you do need to have that minimum million dollar auto liability and 100,000 on the cargo. But yeah, getting that stuff set up is definitely key. If you're planning to work with brokers, um, uh, find loads off of load boards like a DAT load board or, you know, uh, one, two, three, um, a truck stop, uh, there's different ones. If you're planning to work on those load boards and uh, secure loads from brokers, you will need this. Okay. So I, again, I don't operate my business in that capacity, um, but I still wanted to uh, make note of that in this video because I know some of you will be, um, and some of you may even just be in a state where it makes sense. You know, if you're in Texas or, you know, Florida or, you know, some other states like that, where um, you're working in, in your state, um, there's sometimes loads on those load boards here in Arizona, man, not much. We got Phoenix, bro. So there's not a lot moving really in the state on the load boards. Uh, so yeah, on to step number six. So what is some of the equipment that you should keep in your van? All right. So really it's pretty simple. You definitely don't want to have some ratchet straps, uh, you know, four to eight ratchet straps in your van, get some good strength ones like, you know, two to 3000 pounds, at least maybe more like 5,000 pounds. Uh, but get some good, strong ones maybe some bungee cords. Those are super helpful as well. But yeah, you want to be able to strap some things down. In addition to straps, moving blankets is key, especially if you're doing any like furniture, stuff like that. You want to keep stuff safe, man. Like ultimately the service that you provide speaks numbers about your business and that's going to help you uh, continue to carry your business on in the future, repeat business, repeat customers, all of that. Dollies. So, you know, regular dollies, you could get like three in one dollies. Those are super, uh, super clutch furniture dollies. I got a couple furniture dollies in the van. Those are super helpful for like, you know, throwing like heavy appliances, uh, couches, uh, different things of that nature, uh, being able to roll them around super easy. A back brace. I keep a back brace in my van. Uh, so that way if there's super heavy stuff, I can put the back brace on and, uh, tighten that up and it keeps, you know, my back, uh, you know, nice and straight and protected a pair of gloves is good to have a razor like a, a razor blade or you know knife of some kind uh, basically it's good to be able to cut something open even a small little toolkit is super nice to have especially when you're doing like some of these like uh, jobs on go share or dolly sometimes they have minor assembly stuff that you can do and you get paid more for those jobs so having a small little toolkit you know is super super clutch a safety vest Sometimes you may pull up to a location where you're delivering to and a safety vest is required uh, to be worn. So good thing to have a safety vest in your van at all times. Yeah, I think that's mainly it. Like that's let me, let me look at my notes, but I think that's the majority of it. Yeah, so I covered it all. All right, cool. So on to step number seven. Now, step number seven is really just like how to find work, right? I just wanted to just quickly discuss like how can you get moving how can you get some momentum going how can you get some cash flow coming in obviously you want to start a business and part of uh starting a business is is making that first you know sale or in this case you know offering the first service and, and getting paid uh for your services um i focus locally um i focus on building my business uh, in my local city my path uh what's served me very very well 
um, was hopping on as many apps as I could to take advantage of those opportunities. Again, I saw it as an opportunity to get instant cash flow without spending money on marketing, without spending a bunch of time doing, you know, a bunch of stuff, making phone calls, sending emails, trying to find opportunities. It was just, you know, that was, that was one way to be able to instantly be able to start making money um, as soon as I was approved on these apps. So, you know, definitely hop on the different apps. I'll make sure to list down below in the description a bunch of the different apps that I use. That way you guys can see if they're available in your area. All right. Now, in addition to that, you know, uh, if you're looking for contract work, like, you know, I used to work uh, uh, doing some work for FedEx, FedEx Express. Um, a good place to start looking for contract work is uh, going online to like Indeed or Craigslist or, you know, other different job sites. You can even look on Google Jobs. But through that process, just start searching keyword terms like, you know, cargo van owner operator or cargo van courier, uh, essentially just looking those keywords up on those websites uh, in your area and looking to find what contracts, what type of work is available and out there. And then just pick up the phone, start calling, send emails. You know, you have to be very proactive and, and consistent in order to, you know, be successful in this business, right? Like, there is a bit of a grind to it, you know what I mean? Like, again, this business is not going to be for everybody. So you got to be willing to, you know, put the work in, right? Um, and in, in addition to that, you know, you, you can call local brokers, uh, you know, local courier companies, messenger companies. Um, there's a lot of different companies that you can find work through with your van um, and, and start making money. So, you know, utilize all of those opportunities um, to, until you find the right ones that make sense for you and your lifestyle and the way you want to run your business. And, um, you know, ultimately like this is a journey and, uh, you never know where it's going to take you, right? At least I don't. And, uh, I continue to realize that on the daily. Um, so, uh, I keep myself open to the opportunity that's possible. Right. So, but anyways, y'all, um, that's all seven, uh, seven steps on how to start a cargo van business. Uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed uh, this video. It's been a long time since I've been posting, so um, I'm very excited to be back. And uh, yeah, I'm just super grateful for all you guys. Um, I'm sure there's so many new faces since I haven't been here. So uh, hello, and thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time, I will see you all again soon. Peace.